So here's one of the challenges of wilderness living. Standing in a patch or sitting in a patch of uh, raspberries, the raspberry bushes, which is right near the cabin and right um, kind of between all the trees that I tapped this year for maple syrup. But we're in the middle of a, a drought right now and there's no raspberries. This is peak raspberry season. It's the second week of July. And as you can see, these raspberries are just not forming. There's no moisture. That's basically, oh yeah, it's rock hard. Dehydrated raspberries. <laughs> so they're not even maturing. They're not going to by the looks of it, unless we get some major rain. I've had a couple of heavy, heavy rains, but they come so quickly and then it warms right back up again and it all evaporates or runs across the top of the ground because it's so dry. So it's a bad situation if you're trying to live off the land. Uh, fortunately, I harvested a, a lot of maple syrup this year, so I have a lot of sugar, simple carbohydrates in the form of maple syrup and maple sugar. But if I was counting on these berries, which I really was hoping to get a lot of berries picked this year and dehydrated or made into jams or something, preserves, uh, to last me through the winter till next um, next spring. But not going to happen with raspberries by the looks of it. Strawberries up here are sporadic. There's just a few wild strawberries, so not enough to harvest. I, I just eat them as I find them. But blueberries will be maturing. They like this dry, hot weather, but same thing. They do need some rain, a fair amount of rain, to mature fully. Um, so they start becoming available. They're ripe, ripening in the next week or two, and uh, they'll continue right till September, depending on the area. So hopefully I get lots of them, but as I said, raspberries are kind of a no-go for this season unless I find some other patches near the water that are, are doing better than this. And there will be some like that, So, but there's only so much I can do as far as hiking through the thick woods to find spots like that, especially because I'm new to the property up here, new to this land. I don't know all those spots yet. And with the berries doing so poorly already, it means the bears are going to be competing for those berry patches, the prolific or the the uh, more productive berry patches, so they've probably found them and started to wipe them out already. So I'll see what I can find, but I'm not counting on it, so I've got to continue to, to uh, find local sources from probably from local farmers or local uh, homesteaders that are growing stuff and have some excess. And that's why our species has been relying on agriculture for so long. Living a nomadic lifestyle only works if you have, an ac if you have access to a lot of land that you can travel to, to uh, find food but also to relocate to places of abundance once you use up all the resources where you are. So that's not possible in this day and age with uh, more competition and private land ownership and, every, and everything like that, more higher populations. You just can't roam at will and, and set up, set yourself up and set your family and community up wherever you feel that the resources are best suited to support you. But lucky to live in the day and age that we do where we we can uh, try to live off the land, try to live sustainably as much as possible, but have access to the to the uh, productivity of the greater society. So as much as I talk about self-reliance, I'm not saying complete self-reliance or complete independence, because that's essentially impossible and not necessarily even healthy. So thank you to my neighbors, thank you to the farmers that are willing and able to, uh, to prop up the uh, times of uh, shortages like this. It always works out that way that I miss the animals that are coming through. It's a way with, for a couple of days with my wife doing a couple of road trips around the countryside and looks like a moose was through here in the last day or two while we were gone, I guess. Plus it was at night while we were sleeping in the cabin. Um, I'm going to check the trail cameras to see if I captured any footage of the moose walking through down in the valley or, or past the cabin here. 